Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saying together, Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we in the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. is from the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8, and lots of different verses. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest, and the scribe, and the Levite, but who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to your Lord, our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> the psalm today is um, Psalm 19, and we will read it responsibly. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one day imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language. And their voices are not heard. Their sounds have gone out into all lands. And their message to the ends of the earth. So the deep has his set. In the deep he has 
has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The Lord of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and they have brought it to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter are far than honey, and honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping the man is for your reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great mess. Let the, <coughs> excuse me, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading from the New Testament book um, of the Epistle to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 31. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were ba all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole, if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor, and our respected, respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respected, our less respectable members are treated with great respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. For God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are we all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gift. This is the word of the Lord. Good 
Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Or reading from the third chapter of Luke's Gospel, be, sorry, reading from the fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel, beginning at the 14th verse. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel <coughs> of the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please be seated. There are a plethora of games on Facebook that ask the question, who or what would you be if? I usually play these games when they revolve around Star Wars or Star Trek. Would you be a Jedi or a Sith in the Star Wars world? Or if you served aboard the Enterprise, what would your position be? Captain, engineer, science officer? Apparently, Facebook can glean the answer to these pressing matters through our answers to a series of around 10 questions. Out of curiosity, I played one of these games a few years ago. If you lived in ancient times, and served in the royal court, what would your position be? I answered some questions. Facebook spun around for a few seconds and shot back, John, you would have been a cupbearer. It's kind of hoping for a position in the royal guard. However, it turns out being a cupbearer was none too shabby a position. A cupbearer was historically an officer of high rank in the royal courts and was held in high esteem. It was an honor bestowed on only a select few. It was the duty of cupbearers to pour and serve the drinks at the royal table. It carried great responsibility with the constant fear of plots and intrigues such as poisoning. As cupbearer, you were tasked with guarding the drinks for the royal family. It also had its share of danger, as if there was ever suspicion of poison in the drinks being served. It was the duty of the cupbearer to deduce whether this has in fact happened. Unfortunately, this was done by taking the first goal. While doing some reading and research this week, this game came flooding back to me as I remembered I was in very good company. A person from scripture, Nehemiah, held this honored position for the king of Persia in the mid 400s BC. We learned this from the first chapter of the book of we learned this from the first chapter of the book of scripture named after him. The book of Nehemiah is one of the historical books of the Old Testament. Along with the book of Ezra, it gives us a detailed account of the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the temple after the Babylonian invasion and exile. The books of Isaiah, Ezekiel, and many of the other prophets describe how the Babylonians invaded the kingdom of Judah in 586 BC, sacking its capital, Jerusalem, destroying the temple, and sending most of the inhabitants into exile. In 539 BC, the Babylonians were themselves conquered by the Persian Empire. The Persian king Cyrus 
whose heart was stirred by the Lord, allowed the exiles to return home. Their homecoming while a celebratory event was also one of distress, as the people returned to a devastated city and their holy place, the home of God on earth, the temple gone. A long period of reconstruction followed, which took many years and happened in various stages. The books of Ezra and Nehemiah are a continuous narrative and form a single book in the Hebrew tradition known as just that, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Later, Christian tradition has broken these writings into two distinct books. Serving as cupbearer for the king of Persia, on a certain occasion, the king notices Nehemiah is sad and asks him what is wrong. Nehemiah tells the king that he has learned of the destruction of his homeland, Jerusalem, that the gates of the city still lie in ruin. This has caused his somberness. After some discussion, the Persian king sends Nehemiah to his homeland to lead the repairs of the gates of Jerusalem and to report back to him at a later date. The book of Nehemiah describes how he became governor and oversaw some of the final stages of the reconstruction of the city, its repopulation around 445 BC, as well as how he helped the priest and scribe Ezra spread the word of God as set forth in the Torah, the law books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Our reading for today begins the final section of the book depicting the achievements of the return and reconstruction. Part of the reconstruction, in a sense, began during the period of exile. We learn from the books of the prophets that the years leading to exile found the people turning away from God and falling into desolate, corrupt, and immoral and unethical ways of living. The prophets called upon the people again and again to return to the ways of the Lord, Unfortunately, again and again, her words were unheeded. During the dark, horrific time of the exile, a time filled with suffering, loss, and adversity, the prophets continued preaching the word of God, urging the people to not lose heart, for God was still with them. God had not abandoned them. God's spirit still moved among them. A real hunger grew within the people to return to the ways of God as set forth in the Torah. On this day of celebration described in our reading from Nehemiah, as the people celebrate reconstruction and renewal, as they celebrate their resettlement, they call on Ezra the priest to bring forth the law of Moses, the Torah, so that they may hear it. We must remember that back then, you couldn't purchase the books of scripture at a bookstore and most of this time were not literate. So Ezra brings forth the scrolls, and standing with them before and above the community, denoting their authority, begins reading God's holy law, God's word given to the people to help guide and direct their lives, both their communal and personal lives. The morning is spent joyously celebrating homecoming, reconstruction, and hearing and interpreting the word of God which they hungered for in their lives. One of the most splendid parts of this account from Nehemiah today is, as one scholar wrote, its fierce inclusivity. It was rare for the Bible, as well as early Christian, and for that matter, any pre-modern era of literature to address women. However, in this passage, both men and women are addressed at this crucial moment, as the community comes together and the Torah is proclaimed, showing that the Torah is meant for all, that the community includes all. And that is only the beginning of the radical inclusiveness of this passage. It goes on to say, Ezra brought the law before the assembly, all who could hear with understanding, indicating that no matter what gender or age you were, even children, the lowest class of society in this time, were welcome. And we hear this inclusivity emphasized again and again in this passage, breaking down barriers of gender, 
age, class, ethnicity. The Torah, the word of God is meant for all. And just as was true in the time of Moses, the Torah would transform the community into faithful servants, and that truth lives on into today. Jesus came to fulfill the law for the people, and the Torah is the law. And as he begins his ministry, he shows this to be true, especially for the invisible and despised of society. He declares he has come to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. God's law, God's word, God's salvation is for all. I have witnessed our communities of St. James and all saints model the inclusivity of God, of Jesus, to all who walk through our doors and in all our ministries that we extend beyond our buildings. The people of the community we hear about today in Nehemiah once more strive to make the Torah the guiding light of their community, but also in their own personal lives, to model in and by their lives God's word, all these years later, we strive to do exactly the same, to proclaim and live the word of God in community and individually, a word fulfilled in Jesus. Our dismissals all call us to bring our faith, our worship, God's word outside these doors and into the community and the world. We each have our own individual role in making God's word manifest in our lives while working together as members of the body of Christ in the world. In this time of division, in this time of uncertainty <coughs> and fear, let us remember the journey of these ancient peoples who have to be conquered, displaced, and then allowed to return home, but to a devastated country and still under foreign rule, how they came together as a people, nurtured by the word of God, to help steady and guide their lives. It's not always easy. It was not always harmonious. There were times when they would once more fall, turning from God. But God was always there to welcome them to return. Let us allow the word of God today, the same word followed by these ancient people, direct and steady ourselves in these times of uncertainty and bring the welcome of God in our lives to others as we strive to come together as one people, one people nurtured, loved, and redeemed by Jesus Christ. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever. in our bulletins, let us stand in front of our faith and glory to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, life from life, God, 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 be God's and not me, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious power. He suffered death in the spirit, 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken with your prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism that forgives the sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are born free in your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray for the repose of the soul of Josh Casey, cousin of Lee Armstrong, and for the repose of the souls of those who died in the explosion in Ghana and the tsunami in Tonga. Let we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Ray, Leanne, Annie D, Ova, Sarah, Amanda, Janice, <coughs> and Tiffany, Dennis and his family, James, for the kids in Glendora, Mississippi, Rick, Tina, Tina's mom, Patrick, Diane, Judy and Tim, John, Marcus, Martha, Hope, Cash, and family, for Kristen, Barbara, Rose, Kevin and Paula, Herb and Pamela, Harry, Stella, Jubilee, Helen, Bonnie, the Pekin sister Malika and her brother, Nicholas's grandfather Ray, and for Sally, Christine, and Betsy. We pray for places where COVID-19 is surging. We pray for our healthcare workers. We pray for places experiencing natural disasters. We pray for the Afghan uh, refugees settling in our area and country. We give thanks that Amanda and Leanne have both returned home after uh, medical procedures. We thank you for the life, witness, and ministry of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And by you to stand with your Peace the Lord be always with you. And by you to turn around and exchange your songs of peace. Please be seated. Not too much to announce, it's still cold, if anybody was wondering. <laughs> I'm glad you're told. <laughs> uh, the building is cold because uh, oil uh, ran out of the tank, which has happened a few times at St. James, I think. <laughs> uh, so that will uh, be fixed at some point today as well. Uh, but luckily the heat was on yesterday, so it's kind of warm. It's not as cold as it could be. I walked into St. James once, it was 40 degrees, and I knew at that point something was very wrong. <laughs> we had service that day in the parish hall. <laughs> and they were able uh, to, I don't know what they did, but they found out what was wrong and fixed uh, the furnace. Yeah. Uh, the annual meeting is the, uh, will be uh, Sunday, February 27th this year, and we will send out um, information about that as we get closer to the day of how that's gonna work and everything. Um, are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Ascribe to the Lord the honor to do his name and offering him to come to his court with praise and with thanksgiving. Bob, our offering toward him is? Uh, 75. 75. 11. 11.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presented to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrifice of the body of Christ and his blood of new covenant. Unite us to your Son in the sacrifice that we may be acceptable for him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, in the fullness of time for all things in subjection under your grace, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the first one of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us what the Lord to say. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for 
of God, for the people of God. Take the remembrance of Christ our food, and give them in your hearts by faith. Thank you. 